Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday, folks, at 1040, uh, excuse me, 940 in the morning. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. What do you want to Boy, talk so about first? We've had a few uh, events across the globe and the oil market and the commodity and the, um, excuse me, Forex market over the last week. Uh, why don't you give us your take, Teddy, on what's going on with the Russia, Ukraine, and maybe how that's hitting crude and the Forex market to begin with. And then we'll go into the other factors maybe of what's going on. Uh, it's actually a great day to talk about that because you know how we've been uh, for the past year now, we've been using crude as a kind of a variable for which way a lot of the currencies are going to go okay uh now it's going to have a much different factor so you got to remember that the, that the the oil market is based in u.s dollars and also in euro dollars so as we impose these sanctions on russia and all these things start to change around europe and stuff as far as the delivery of gas and oil and things like that coming out of russia or where they do go um this is going to have a big influence on the currency markets so uh as far as you got to remember where we're at in this position, this is Russia versus the NATO countries. So certain countries are not going to be affected and impacted as much in, in as far as strength or weakness in the dollar as some other currencies are. Okay, so now I would be very cautious as far as being a dollar bull right now. I think you're going to still remain with the with the U.S. dollar yen doing that. Um, but outside of that, now, especially with Australia opening up, you know, uh, the dollar is going to get very weak versus the Australian dollar. Um, New Zealand dollar, I think, is, is riding the coattails of Aussie right now. Um, I would be very leery until they start to open up more of their restrictions. This, this, I don't think their rally is going to be as strong as what you're going to see in the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar over the next literally week or two. Um, when that moves, the Aussies can be a lot like the pound. Like it gets a very, very overextended at over exacerbated to trend you know and i think that right now you have a balloon underwater rally going on right now and as far as how much velocity it's going to get the more this is situation with the russia ukraine is going to definitely fuel this stuff okay so it's going to be big for china because now one of their biggest core commodity producers is going to be back online and shipping and getting things back towards a, a normal if you will whatever that is um but it, it is going to accelerate because they were basically at a stop okay so for that area of the world you're going to see a lot of dollar weakness okay especially with the aussie it's going to be a very a lot of divergence for that region. Now, as far as the euro, the pound, and the Swiss, it's Swiss cheese right now. We've been talking about how it's been sideways for a couple of weeks. We're going to get a breakout, okay? Now, we have to look at how things are. Remember, we had Brexit, okay? The UK now has their sovereignty, okay? So, And they're also not impacted by energy the way the EU is. So the question is, is how are, how are these players going to work together um, not just against Russia, but also for themselves, you know. So now there's a lot of issues between the UK and also um, the EU, you know. So now is it are they going to drop their, you know, indifferences, if you will, between themselves um, and work towards at least one fundamental goal, which is defending or, you know, acting against Putin? I don't know. That's going to be a very big Thing to try and figure out, especially because look at the COVID restrictions. The UK is now dropping all their COVID restrictions. The EU is not, you know. So where that pans out, I think that the euro US dollar could trend, stay where it's at and go sideways to lower the pound. We've talked about this before. I think you might see that actually break out to the upside. And as far as the Swiss, I, I, I don't see that really going anywhere right now. You know, I really don't. I think you're going to be caught in this range that we've been in for the last six months. That's a great uh, wraparound to, to many different variables going mm -hmm. on in that market, man, when we got potential war out there. Uh, just looking at, you know, the, the things playing out from, from a very far distance of, of mm -hmm. not digging too deep. I don't understand the situation as well as many, right? But what I do understand mm -hmm. is it's probably going to persist for some time as intentions over there are pretty high um, mm -hmm. no matter what. Do you see this just kind of being a continuing thing? Because I don't know how there's a resolution when you have something like Putin going out there land mm -hmm. grabbing, right? It's like that's not a, something that's going to resolve in, in the immediate future. I mean, oil right. prices, currency, you know, influences. I just see that as a pretty present, you know, factor for at mm -hmm. least the foreseeable future over there with a little sure. bit of, you know, instability, elite to say the lightest, you know, at, at a mm -hmm. minimum. 
Yeah, well, this is going to be the, the biggest focus right now. Um, I, I mean, I've been saying that after the Olympics, that's when China goes after Taiwan. That's when Putin starts to kick up his heels. However, we're playing into Putin's hand right now. We've shown all our cards. We have been doing that for a past couple of weeks. This situation didn't start a month or two ago. This has been going on now for months as far as conflict in the Ukraine, okay? So it's not like all of a sudden Ukraine is under pressure. They've been under pressure since the summertime, okay? And things have just finally come to a big boil. You know, if, if Putin was to back off and pull all his troops all the way back to Moscow, it's not going to change what's going on in the Ukraine, okay? Sure. There is still all kinds of infighting. You have. You got to realize there's four factions in, in the Ukraine. You have the controlling political party, most of which is in hiding, okay? Then you have the people who just want to have Ukraine. They don't want Putin, and they don't want the leadership they have now. They want to have a free democracy, which they don't have, and that's what they're fighting for. Then you have also the Russian separatists that want to have the Soviet, or what would boys the old Soviet Union, come back, okay? So those three factions are clashing. And then you also have the neo-Nazi movement that's also there. So you have four factions that are fighting each other, and now you add the Russian influence. Okay, so it's you know no war can you can't have a fight a two war a two front war and be able to exist. The Ukraine has a multiple front war that it's fighting inside itself. You know, so this is not going yeah. away. It's not. I mean, Putin, like I said, he can back off, disappear. It would not change a thing. The Ukraine is up for grabs. That whole region is up for grabs, you know. And then as far as, you know, NATO is the one that broke all the – they're the ones that broke the treaties first, you know. So, I mean, we should not – they should never have been where they were at. Would that change a thing? Would that mean that Putin – if Putin would have moved in first – then that would have been something for NATO to do. You know, they should have done sanctions beforehand instead of doing what they're doing now. We're, we're being reactive, and that's why I said we're playing into Putin's hand. You know, like, I, I've listened to a lot of people, that, like, he shouldn't be on the world stage, he's a stooge. Um, well, I don't like the guy, but anyone that thinks that, one, you know, like it or not, Russia is a world power. You know, for the last, like, especially five years, the, the West has tried to denounce them. Well, you can't denounce a country that has 14 time zones. You know, I mean, it's just and it's that big. Yeah, I listen, mean, I don't know anybody actually yeah. that's called Putin a stooge. And if they do, I don't so, think that's the right call. Me. He's an no. ex KGB, probably bright and brilliant and just uh, a right. very bad person. Um, Absolutely. With a lot of power and a lot of nuclear weapons and a lot of people right. and a lot of land. He's like the guy um, with the cat from a James Bond movie. Exactly. I mean, yeah. That, Sometimes I mean, they can so. be smart, even if they're evil man which is sure. the real bummer of That's it all the scary right exactly right. So, well but we'll be Teddy talking man about it's always an adventure week to week i imagine where mm -hmm. we're going to be next wednesday uh and as we wrap it up here we got crude at 92.35 you see a test in the highs recently or are we going to test maybe those lows uh like 85 80 bucks where, where we're are we going, going higher we're going to keep prices on yeah. all right man teddy thank babies. you so much for the segment we appreciate it great. we'll talk to you next week man absolutely take care okay